The Andrew Peach Show. BBC Radio 5. BBC Radio Berkshire. Lots of interest this morning on the front pages in your calls and WhatsApp messages with this Downing Street Christmas party, 18th of December last year. Did it happen? Were rules broken? Have ministers lied about it? Now we've got this video released to ITV News showing kind of mock press conference, a rehearsal press conference four days later in which Downing Street employees appear to be referring back to this party. Tan Desi is the Labour MP for Slough. Morning, Tan. Morning, Andrew. You're Boris Johnson's political opponent, so you, you could find a reason you want him to resign any day of the week, but this is today's. Well, look, Andrew, after the seamlessly end, never-ending set of lies uh, it, it, uh, and the endorsing of corruptive practices with Owen Patterson, the billions of pounds going into crony COVID contracts, the utter disregard for the truth, the rules, and now these further revelations of taking the British people for fools with his part, uh, with his party, which, by the way, was denied by the Prime Minister, ministers, when he was questioned last week in PMQs by Sir Keir Starmer. Uh, then again, he was evasive, didn't answer the question. And I, I think, seriously, the Prime Minister needs to resign so that we can get some decorum, some respect and restoration of trust back into government. It's these ministers, by the way, that are giving us lectures ad nauseum in, in, in Parliament about British values, uh, about honesty, well, they should p- be practising what they're pre- preaching. What What do you say to a, a substantial body of listeners? It was actually a, a majority earlier on in the show, although the balance has shifted a bit now, but what do you say to listeners who've been in touch this morning saying, Peachy, we don't care whether there was a Christmas party in Downing Street or whether there wasn't. It's ancient history. It's a year ago. We've got pressing problems to deal with now. Why is everyone talking about this? Well, Andrew, it does matter because the truth matters. Uh, British values and, and our, the, the history uh, of, of parliament and of, of leadership demands that those that are leading the country are held to a higher standard and that they are the ones that are setting the rules for us. Uh, and, and who can forget the Dominic Cummings saga? You know, uh, when people were dying, oh, I, my grandmother passed away, my slough taxi driver uncle passed away, uh, and my brother's... Uh, 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 brother-in-law's father passed away in a, in a slough care home. When that was happening, we had people making the rules, breaking them at will. And, and we had ministers joking, just as uh, they've been caught doing now, joking about, oh, uh, uh, yes, whenever I need to test my eyesight, I also take a long drive. Uh, and that's why these people have no place in government. Go- running a, a country, leading a country, is a serious business. Of course. And we've had, I should say, we've had listeners in touch this morning making the same point, people who lost relatives around that time last year, saying, you know, we didn't go and hold the hand of my mum while she was passing away, while this kind of thing may or may not have been going on. Just coming back to the politics of it, this is an open goal for your leader at Prime Minister's Questions today. If Keir Starmer cannot win Prime Minister's Questions today, then really he shouldn't be in the job. Fair comment? Look, Andrew, he won it last week. He took this particular issue. He tried to probe, push... Uh, and once again, all we had in response from the Prime Minister was just some gags and uh, just some more bluff and bluster. So every single week, he's methodically taking down, deconstructing the lies uh, of this government. And, and that's why I think that it, the truth does matter. And, and, and we need to make sure that people, good, uh, fair-minded people, are emailing MPs, especially Tory MPs, to demand the resignation of this Prime Minister. Right. You're, I mean, you're a fully paid-up member of the Keir Starmer fan club now, by the sound of it. You were very close to Jeremy Corbyn. They couldn't be more different as Labour leaders. The party's changed beyond recognition, uh, but, but you're now in with a new guy. Well, look, uh, uh, the Labour Party is a broad church, and we there is a lot of respect for different strands of opinion. People within the Parliamentary Labour Party hold uh, sometimes differing views, but the, are passionately held views. So uh, I very much uh, respect that the membership, just as previously they had elected uh, Jeremy Corbyn to lead them, now they have uh, elected Sir Keir Starmer to lead them. And my job is to be doing uh, the, the role that I've been given, which in this case is the Shadow Rail Minister. So I'll constantly be exposing the broken promises, as I will be doing, by the way. I've got the honour today of closing the Opposition Day debate on investment in rail, the lack of the Western Rail Link to Heathrow, which was promised back in 2012, the 
Northern Powerhouse Rail, which was promised on more than 60 occasions by ministers, which still hasn't been delivered. Uh, the HS2 Eastern leg, which uh, Boris Johnson and others stood up mm. and uh, said that they would be delivering. That's not being delivered. So I'll be doing my job, and I'm sure Keir and others will be doing their job. I got it. Uh, and just in terms of Slough Town, because we haven't had a chance to talk for a few uh, weeks on the programme, is Slough ready for the Omicron variant? We know that vaccine take-up in Slough has been slower than elsewhere. We also know that actually case numbers in Slough are lower than elsewhere at the moment, but it's no doubt just a matter of time before this new variant hits the town. Do you, do you think the, the NHS and all the services are ready to cope? Andrew, uh, an, an excellent point. And although numbers may be low at present, we cannot be complacent. And that's why the likes of myself have been getting the message out there, along with uh, Slough Borough Council, Slough Council for Voluntary Service, other voluntary organisations, the importance of people taking their vaccine jab or their booster jab. I uh, was pleased uh, to have taken my booster jab last week at the Salt Hill Vaccination Centre and I would respectfully request all others because that's the our best weapon against this uh, virus, against this pandemic, if we want to overcome it and if we want to protect our lives, protect the lives of our loved ones and ensure that we are not a burden onto the National Health Service uh, by not taking the vaccine. That's what could happen. So please uh, take the vaccine and uh, follow government guidance. Thank you very much indeed, Tan, for being with us. Tan Desi 